All right, you guys, welcome back to another episode of Car Talk, where we talk about everything cars in the import automotive industry, scene, and culture. I'm your host, Big Mike, with... Ryan Bossery from Rywire. And today, in this episode, we're going to talk about swaps, okay? We're going to talk about past, present, and future. Past, we're going to talk about the classics. We're going to talk about the ones that paved the way, the ZCs, right? Okay. Single yeah. and, and dual overhead ZCs, Ds, and Bs. I mean, those are like what led up to where we have now, right? Yeah. So a lot of you guys are going to be kind of like, well, what about the K? We're going to talk about the K next, okay? We're going to talk about the K and we're going to talk about a bunch of other ones. But the D and the B, really, honestly, it's really the B. Yeah. Right? B course. is kind of like foundational. Mm -hmm. But the people who were back long enough, people were putting ZCs, yep. right, and CRXs. I've done my fair share of those. Right? Yeah. And um, and I remember of going from a single cam ZC to a dual cam, and you're yeah. just like, this is so much faster. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was faster, but was it like that much faster? I mean, I guess I thought it was. Back then, we both yeah, thought yeah. it was. Have you guys ever had... Okay, have any of you guys watching this ever even heard of or driven a car with a ZC motor in it? I just want to know. So you've done you've done ZCs. Yeah. Okay. When, you know, Ryan Ryan's a big CRX guy. So was that your first swap into the CRX, a ZC? Mm, let me think about this. So it actually was not my first swap. My first swap, okay, one of my buddies had a CRX. And yeah. It came with a dual cam ZC. Yeah. So I obviously had to try to one-up them. So I did the B16A, JDM B16A. Yes. So that was my first actual like hands-on swap. Yeah. And then I did single cam ZC swaps. After that, dual cam ZC swaps, GSR swaps. So cetera, your first swap ever was the B16. B16. I remember we've talked about this before. That was your first swap ever. Mm -hmm. But you had driven swapped ZCs. Yeah. Uh, okay. ZC. My buddy had one already done. Oh, but so then, you didn't do it. I didn't do it. But you drove. Have you, did you drive I it? I drove it, and you were yes. like, "This is nice." Oh, it was more. It was more power than my D sixteen A six. Yeah. SI engine. So, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, it was. I mean, it was definitely faster. Okay, so you know the ZC, you guys. This is like they were affordable. I mean, truthfully, I think ZC motor might actually be oddly worth like some money right now if you yeah. can, if you can even find one. But we're talking like, I don't know, late nineties. Mid mid late nineties. Yeah. So okay, CRX. You ended up doing that. Um, I didn't have a ZC, but I had friends. Same thing. I had a friend who had a. Um, I think one guy had an EF with a single, mm -hmm. and somebody had an EF or a CRX with a dual cam ZC. And we, you know, you pop the hood, you're like, fuck, you know, yeah. you know, like the ZC hood. Yeah. Right. Well, on yeah. on the on the CRX, yeah. you're just like. Ugh. That oh, little bulge. That little bulge, right? They had to have one more uh, yeah. camshaft. Yeah, it was dope, man. I mean, the people who would get the hood even without it. Yeah. Because I mean, we everyone wanted the cool, like, JDM stuff, right? So I remember getting a ride, and then I drove one of the homies, and I was like, yeah, my my single cam D-series, US D-series, yeah. not going to cut it, right? Yeah. Um, so it ended up being to the point where um, I ended up getting a CRX, but I bought it. So shout out to Dr. Charles, to everybody in here who knows Dr. Charles. I've been around a long time, and this is when he was at Atomic, mm -hmm. right? I mean, that was that was Dr. Charles, Atomic. Yeah, the shop, yeah. And um, I bought the CRX. I actually bought the CRX from a homie of mine who is now uh, um, an LA County Sheriff. Uh, and this was, I mean, this is when he was a teenager. But um, the CRX was white. It had the Wings West. Uh, RS body kit, yep. the Mugen one. Yeah. But you know, it was your thing. Yeah. So we were like, oh yeah, fit mint, you know, it's gonna it's gonna last just forever. Bolts right on, like just white with the kit, had an atomic sticker on the on the on the side. Back window or yeah. yeah. And I was just like, this is like the dopest CRX I've ever seen. And he was like, you know, it's not the most comfortable thing. It only needs a little bit of work. And he sold it to me for cheap. But what it did have in it was a B sixteen, right? And it had a chip which i think was an atomic chip which i don't know what dr charles did in that chip the only thing i know There's was no that rev it didn't have a rev <laughs> it didn't have a rev limiter so for all of you guys that have chip p28s or any type of like program which 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 removed the rev limiter we all thought that we became faster 
Oh yeah. When all well, you were doing was potentially just imploding the shit yeah, out of your they, engine. They changed VTEC a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So right? you can maybe like in reality it kind of dips. Yeah. Because uh you know, I think that the OBD0 V16 factory ECU from mm -hmm. what I remember okay. with like an intake the VTEC crossover was actually pretty good because yes. you don't you don't feel it as violently. Sure. But the second that you put a chip in it, yes, yes, they move the VTEC like I think it's like further away, so like higher up in the power band. Yes. So then there's a little bit of dip in in in, in horsepower. And then it punches you and harder. Then, yeah, and then it hits way harder because of that dip. And so you thought that you were flying. Yeah, oh, like way faster. Than yeah, yeah, it's the truth, man. The thing that I remember about those B16s, and for any of you guys that have done it, those of you guys who've been around longer, you're going to know. Dude, those first gen B sixteens, you could not destroy those things. I know. Yeah. Dude, you guys, honestly, for some of the younger guys, you honestly would have ten thousand RPM engines. Yeah, like... You would never have a reason to have experienced this. And it's not a knock to you. It's just this is just not what people are into right now, right? But these first gen B sixteens. Okay, so just like what he said, no no rev limiter. In this CRX I had an autometer monster tack with the, the exploding shift light, right? And it and I don't remember what the I think the pill remember it had a pill yeah, to pill. make it yeah. was at nine thousand. You could change the pills right. and it would change the and it would ex so first of all you're not supposed to be shifting this at nine thousand right? right but I shifted it at like over nine thousand first second third I don't know if I ever took it to nine thousand and fourth because I would have been going some stupid mile per hour but I drove that car for years like an absolute asshole. Right? Just the B sixteen could not be destroyed. Yeah. I mean you're talking about you could feel the whole car slow after like eighty five hundred. Yeah. Like you are pushing into it and the needle's going up, but you're not going any faster. In any other thing you would just destroy it. Right. These things would not They just keep revving. Yeah. It, and the, the transmissions hardly ever went. Yeah. I mean, I had a six puck unsprung. Like third gears would sometimes grind a little bit. Sometimes. But then you put that synchro mesh GM fluid yeah. in it. And it would like. <laughs> then you start chirping grind. again? Yeah. You <laughs> can start chirping it's like, here. It's like a free, like, 20,000 so, miles off of your transmission. So the GM synchro mesh was like the hack that if your trans was grinding, you pour in this GM synchro mesh fluid, and all of a sudden your grinds went away, which anyone who knew better was like. I, I'm pretty sure that's not fixing anything. Yeah. But we were like, <laughs> and it would just be dope, right? You're like, J just wait like like a couple hundred miles. Yes. It'll go away. It'll go it's away. It's gonna work itself in. But dude, those and then it would it would do it though. It'd those like, YS one was it a YS one? Well, that was one of them. Yeah. Y one and YS one. Yeah. Those trans were like, dude, that you know the gearing in the B sixteen was what made that car so fun. It's the torqueless wonder. Mm -hmm. The thing made no torque, but you could rev to hell and you had a lot of fun and that's kind of what ended up leading up to people saying wait a minute the the prelude because all the, as early as 90 you know 92 93 you have the big body motor mm -hmm. right 2.2 liters i mean some people put it h23 but you know because there's no vtec yeah you had a 2.2 liter vtec motor and they're like yeah it's going to be so much heavier but people were putting them in egs and integras and the, yeah. they, they boogied yeah right but the weak thing for people who are launching and racing was the transmissions. Right. And somebody was like, dude, my B-series transmission gearing is short. What if you put short gearing on this torquey 2.2 liter big big motor? And, and H2B was H2B H2B's were born. Man, yeah. who made that first adapter? It's got to have been like, I don't know. Do it, any of you guys like, know? I know BC was one of the first ones... But I don't know if he was the first one to do that. I don't that. remember, man. I don't remember. Do any of you guys watching, do you remember who was the first company H to, B. to make an H to B adapter? Because, yeah, then you had the F to B, and there was those, there right? Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but who made the first H to B adapter? I know the Quarter, quarter Sports. QSD. QSD. They had it um, in NorCal first. That was where okay. I first saw it. They I also was, made I those hood be, spacers. Yeah, that was one of the I things. I remember that, but they made the adapter plate. Mm -hmm. Was it QSD? You guys, was it they QSD? Had an adapter plate. But I, I feel like that there was somebody down here in SoCal before that, mm -hmm. or even a company that was making at least small runs, and then QSD kind of took it to the next level. But honestly, I was never big with the H, so I'm not really sure. Okay, so on that note, why do you think you were never big with the H? Was it because just people up there just so, didn't really mess with them? 
Did it, he care? It was, it was because I was a, a CRX guy, yeah. if you will. Like, before even me being a Honda enthusiast, yeah. I was just a CRX enthusiast. Like, okay. literally a CRX enthusiast. I was not interested, really, in um, any other Hondas but that. Just I mean, EGs were cool. Yeah. Like, if a Type R, DC Type R, I would yeah. be like, oh, it's a great car. Yeah. But I was in a certain category because I was limited by money, my yeah. finances, um, and I knew the car's the best. Yes. So I was like, I'm just a CRX. So it's so easy to work for you on yeah. a CRX. Yeah, and an H-Series and a CRX was, like, you're, you're, you're pushing it with a B, with hood clearance, okay. and a B eighteen, and then you're like definitely an SIR hood, and then sure, it's like the the H series was the guy that wanted to like rock like the good hood, uh huh, uh huh, like the big bubble hood, yeah, and like didn't care yes. that his engine was sticking out of his or car. if the hood was ended up being the right. way people did the hood up, and then like H to B made sense, but I just I wasn't you I just wasn't, never wanted to do no, it. No, I never, I never was really. Everyone was talking about the weight, but I think it's only eighty something pounds more. Yeah, and also the balance shaft stuff. Like, I didn't have any experience sure. with it. I, I wasn't like really prepared to like learn a new engine. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Have any of you guys ever driven an H two B, CRX uh, hatch, EG Integra? If you have, man, it it was it was a fun. Damn it's car. probably pretty comparable to a K as far as power. This is true. This is true. Now, Ks respond more yeah. to mods, which we're going to get to. This is just the history and all the swaps. And Okay, but to this day, there are a ton of people still doing Bs. Yeah. Right? So, like, one thing that we can't forget about is, like, think about, like, the Mini Cooper guys. Yes. Even, like, let's just take it away from Hondas for a second, right? Obviously, there's everybody and their mother as a B-swapped, EG or yeah. CRX, yeah. right? But like you know, um, you gotta you gotta remember that the Honda engines were so are so good that cross platforming them. That's was... true. You bring up a good point with the minis. There is still an entire segment of the Mini Cooper fans, classic minis, yeah. that are that have a Honda B series kit now. And I remember when people were still trying to make it fit. Um, we talked about Arm. From Avuna, he oh, had yeah. one. Right, right, right. right? Yeah. Um, there, but there's, yeah. there's several companies that specialize in that. Yeah, yeah. And now. they literally have kits and all this. And then, like, we sell wi our wiring loom packages to a couple of those guys. And then they, like, they literally make a custom integration harness. So it's yeah. like just our off the shelf engine harnesses. And then an and adapter. Then they, and then they just, they just, we just give them, like, the flying lead. And then they, yeah. they make their own to specific to how they okay. want the minis to be. So it's pretty cool. So like minis is huge. Um, like what else gets Bs and what else gets Hs and what else like off road buggies? So there were some. That's pretty popular. There were some that did that. I mean, obviously now when you're going into big time off road stuff, they're doing Ford EcoTech motors. Yeah, um, and that's they're a, dabbling with J. We'll talk about that. Later. Yeah, yeah. Th so there's a like lot a, of Honda. He Ryan brought up a damn good point. You know, uh, we're talking about a lot of Honda platforms. In other episodes, we're going to talk about, you know, Nissan and Toyota and a bunch of other things. This particular episode, we're just focusing a lot on Honda stuff, not just because we're Honda enthusiasts, but because of there is a certain amount of respect, whether anyone wants to give it or not, that yeah, has been that earned. Good. Because you're talking about off-roading, minis, and just all kinds of other platforms where Honda, uh, automotive power plants, we're not even talking about the stuff Honda makes for boats and motorcycles. We're talking about taking their automotive power plants and using them, right? And like he just mentioned, in the off-road world now, they're doing they're doing other stuff like Ecotex, but they're also doing J series um, and K series. There's there's mm -hmm. dune buggies that are out there using those things. We're gonna get to that, but I mean, you know, the the B um, is still popular, um, and if you can remember, yeah, in 2019, just a few months ago, yeah, how many B series not even wire harnesses, specific B-series parts, which is an indication that somebody has already a B-series power plant or they're doing a swap or they don't want to swap out the B and they're modifying within or around it. How many B-series related parts do you think you moved under Rye Wire 2019? Uh, maybe like, probably like at least 2,000. 2,000? Yeah. B series mm. specific. Somebody swap. has a B series yeah. engine. Like a wire loom of some sort. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, 2,000, right? Yeah, at least, like, two, I mean, it's got to, it, it's 2,000 would be a safe number. A safe number. You know, and it's funny because I know that there are B-series driving around. But you know what? If you think about it, if you look, you hardly ever see anything with a B-series. The yeah. K is the staple. <laughs> it's the new B, right? But yet 2,000 people, separate people, yeah, right, separate, yeah. ordered something specific to their B-series. So they're clearly not looking to swap anytime yeah, soon. They're just spending the money. Very safe it's number. Safe number. Conservative. Yeah. And, you know, and, and, and you guys, I mean, obviously, as the K-series has evolved, there's any of their, their uh, defects or their, their like weak spots pretty much being addressed. You have all these companies that address things from tensioners, which was a big thing at one point. You know, when you have companies like, I don't know, Jeremy at Dry Cartel, right? You get anything you need, right? Yeah. You have K-Tune, you have hybrid, anything aesthetic, or to, to better the OE, it's there. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can build rock-solid Ks. I mean, you're still going to spend good money. But before all of that, there were people who were putting in these single-cam, dual-cam ZCs, the D-series. Mm -hmm. I mean, people took, I mean, you know, BZ is probably the most uh, common one, uh, popular one, to, to have sort of made that popular. Mm -hmm. The um, D and all this, all the oddball old stuff. All the oddball the D and F, F single, single cam. Over it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I mean, but there were people who did H's. I mean, I remember the first time that I wrote in an H two B hatch, and I was like, "This is fucking quick, man!" And it was just like, "What was this H twenty two with a, a YS one? I think it was mm -hmm. a B series trans. They got the adapter, a clutch. It they didn't even have bolt ons on the H yet. Yeah, it's and, fast. and it was just torquey, you know." And it moved, and, and they put the battery in the trunk, and that damn near put the weight back to normal. Right? Because it was only like 80. Yeah, I mean, you take out a couple factory option stuff, mm -hmm. and then you move the battery, and you like. How? Do, you, dude, how, how much did an OEM Honda battery weigh in the 90s? Well, they were still kind of small, but. Um, like a Civic one was like probably 28 pounds? Yeah, they were, I was going to say about 30 pounds. Something, something like that, that right? Uh, I mean, obviously, with battery technology, everyone's running these smaller ones. But, I, I mean, I remember the first time out of a full-size car, like an Accord, when you grab the handle, d you try to just pick it up all quick. It was like two-hander. Oh, yeah. You're like, dude, this is a heavy-ass Dude, my old, BM, my old BMW battery, yeah. it had two handles on it. And you needed two handles. Oh, it was heavy. Like, what, what would you get, 40? Yeah, at least. At least? Yeah. Yeah, so if you have huge. an engine that's 80 pounds, you take 28 from the battery, put it in the back... You remove a couple things, all of this stigma of, oh, it's so heavy, you're going to be front heavy, which actually in a drag car would be a good thing yeah, to help keep you, to give you attraction, wheels. right? Yeah. And it's just been a really cool thing to be able to observe both as a kid, right? We're about the same age, yeah. right? Seeing these things, for us, it was, um, you know, seeing the cars on the street um, and then turning into being able to see them in print. And uh, if we, in, you know, I don't know, you went to the street races in NorCal. I used to go to the street races down here. And so you would see them and then just seeing that evolution. It's been really cool, you know, to see the people who had to make jumper uh, harnesses uh, to fit, you know, OBD1, OBD2, and this chip yeah. P28, and the Mugen program, and the Spoon program, and all these programs, which were probably not, they just named them that. Yeah. Right? For the P28, right? That, that the 92 to 95 Civic. SI ECU, right? right? The P28, EX SI. Yeah. EX SI, that's the one you needed. I remember that when I first bought one so I could get a chip, uh, maybe like 2001 or something, it was like a hundred something bucks. Mm -hmm. And I was like, damn, that's mm -hmm. expensive. And they were like, hey man, you gotta pay to play. And I was like, true. And I remember spending like 120 bucks on a chip P28. And, and now if someone's like $120 is like a laughable amount to unlock. And, extra power and those are they're so hard to find now oh yeah that the price is like three four times oh yeah yeah it's been really cool i mean so your friend zc you had to do the b16 to outdo him yeah and when you did it um was it like the greatest experience ever when you were ripping it it was pretty good okay um i remember coming down here this was this was crazy this, i haven't thought about this in years but my cousin lives down here right yeah and he's like he's like dude we're gonna like he was just he was Graduating, yeah, high school graduation, parties, girls, drinking. I was into that stuff at that sure. time, point in time in my life. 
He's like, dude, you gotta get down here. I'm like, dude, I'm doing this swap in the dirt in front of my house. Yeah. And he's just like, get it done and drive down here. Damn, Shit. your shakedown was to drive from Northern California? No lie, no oh, lie. So this what? is what happened, this is what happened. I put it in, everything's tight. I'm like, all right, cool. I'm like, I'm gonna drive down there in the morning. Yes. He's like, all right, cool. This is like four o'clock in the afternoon, right? Yes. Get the car started, it starts right up. I'm like driving it um, around. You know what's really bad of me? This was actually my GSR swap, not my B16 swap. Okay. That's hey, it's, it's a B. Anyway, so, it's a B. So I, I was putting a GSR in and this and that, whatever. I get it running. I pull it out from my house, driving it around my neighborhood just to like make sure everything is good. Yeah. Car dies. I'm like, oh shit. I'm like thinking about it. The only reason the car would just die is the distributor. Okay. So I pull apart the distributor, um, notice that there was some corrosion and stuff like that. And I literally, I called one of my buddies and I said, what do you think it is? And then they're like, I bet you it's the igniter. Okay. And I'm just like, all right, cool. I called another friend that had an igniter, right? This is how crazy it was. Then I pushed the car home. Yes. Because I was just blocks from my house. Okay. I was literally diagnosing and figuring it out like a few blocks away. Okay. Get it home, uh, get a new igniter by morning. And I told my cousin, I'm like, I'm gonna shoot down there if this igniter works. He's yes. like, all right, cool. Put the igniter in, car fired up, that's what it was. Yes. Literally just drove the car. So you didn't change the whole distributor. No. You took off the cap, I took it out, switched it out the apart, igniter. Switched out the igniter, just hope that it was that. Because I didn't have the money, the time, the resource to just go to go get another distributor. I knew, I knew that somebody had like a donor one that was good, but had like the coil missing. Sure, whatever. sure. So then I just, boom, threw that in. Done. Drove it down to LA. Yeah. And then I remember being in LA, I drove up to my cousin's house, got there at night, because I drove in the morning, got yeah. there at night. There was there were these people next door that I used to uh, play with when I was a kid. Okay. And um, it was the neighbors of my cousins. And then I pull up, and then there was another CRX. And I'm like, what are the fucking odds, right? Yeah. <laughs> so then I pull up, and I'm like, mm, pull up. And then this dude's like, Hey yo, what you got in that? And I'm like, oh great, this sure. is fucking one of these, right? And I'm like, I'm like, ah, nothing, dude. And he's like, it sounded, it sounds pretty hot. And I'm just like, okay, whatever. <laughs> and I'm like, hopefully this guy doesn't steal my shit, right? Sure, so sure. We, we like walk. It's dark. We walk over, and he's like, oh dude, aren't you that guy on Honda Tech, whatever, like dropped CRX SI? Yeah. This was like before, like really, like Rywire kind of started. Yeah, you know? yeah. Like too much, Was right? that your screen name on Honda Tech? Yeah, dropped CRX SI. Nice. And the guy recognized the car. And I'm like, oh, from I'm the seeing forums. your car. Yeah, this is just from the forums. And he's like, you live here? I'm like, no, this is my friend, da, 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 my, my cousin. And then, you know, the people that you were with, yeah. uh, those were my friends when I was a kid. We used to play together. And then they came over and it was like really weird. It was like clashing two lives together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then my cousin, uh, his friend had an M3, E36 M3. Yeah. And I knew him and stuff. And there was this whole thing that we were going to like race. And I'm like, oh, I want to race your, yeah. your, your buddy and this and that. So we went out and this was, um, uh, oh shit, what is it called? <laughs> uh, Chatsworth. Okay. And you know how they race up in Chatsworth, like up on the hill? And okay. there's a spot in Chatsworth. And it just so happens that that's the spot that we went to. Because I think somebody knew that they used to race up there. Okay. So then our race was at the spot where all the drag racing was. Because there was like all Like coincidentally? Yeah, coinc I didn't, well, maybe you not. You didn't know. I didn't know. Sure. I'm like, this is like a drag spot. There's all these like tire marks. Sure. So I race him. And I literally beat him by a half car length. Okay. And it was the greatest thing ever. Yes. Because it's like an M3. And, and I didn't even like launch well because I was new to the whole engine sure. and everything. But still, I still beat him. Yeah. It was pretty rad. So no issues. No issues After at all. After you got the igniter. Yeah. You, like, you bled the car. It was perfect. And you drove down, yeah. raced the dude in an yeah. M3. Yeah. Drove back up to NorCal. No issues. Yeah. Okay. So... Okay. I that, remember I remember that's I remember bleeding the coolant like about 30 minutes in on my drive down. It was like starting to overheat a little bit on the highway. Did you not bleed it beforehand? I bled it but like not, not that good long. enough. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then it had kind of whatever I let it just idle there and let it bubble everywhere and I had like some I had some random tools and stuff in the car. Yeah. I just filled it up with some water, tightened down the cap kind of and then yeah. it just it was 
cool the whole way there. So I was like, all right. Hey, you okay, look, man, that's ballsy. Back then at the same time, I didn't know how to do the, that amount of work, right? I was completely dependent on people. I hadn't been around enough people wrenching to learn, right? So I had to have the swaps done for me, right? That's just how it was. And, um, you know, it takes somebody saying, no, nah, man, let's do it together. Or, yeah. or just come through to the house. We're doing the homies car. Yeah. And you just got to watch. And, or just, you know, like on my live streams, people ask me, like, how do I learn? It's just like, honestly, man, you just got to go do it. Start with changing your oil, you know? Like, changing your oil is like as simple as you have to wait till it cools down, you know, jack it up, learn how to be safe, put learn a tire. To, learn how to jack it up. Yeah, jack yeah. it up properly at a jack point. Use, you know, jack stands and a tire. You know, always got to be safe. Make sure your oil cools down. Make sure you don't strip the bolt head. There's like a couple of really basic logical things that kind of go into that. You use a crush washer when you put it back. And I mean, I mean, I don't know how many of you guys fucked up an oil change before, but I did. I remember the first time I forgot to put the washer. So then what do you do? When you have to take it off, you start losing all this fresh oil. It's all over the place. So anyways, the point is, is that everyone starts somewhere, right? Nobody's just an expert, right? Ryan had already figured out how to do a swap, and I was paying somebody to do it at the same, about the same years. And it just evolved, and now we're sitting here together talking with you guys. So don't worry about all that, you know, don't, don't, everything, everyone now looks like they're a master at everything, and they're, you know, just don't worry about that, you guys. But, you know, we're reminiscing on all of these because these power plants and the racing and the people who try to figure out how to fit this and pour a throttle body for the first time you have people who put carbs on stuff because they were like i think i can make more power carbureted there's all of this history and it's really led up to a point now where anything b series you could ever want is there so if you want to do a b you could do it and have the craziest cams pistons compression ratios you could do turbo setups manifolds just gnarly anything you could ever need Full CNC now, too. Yeah. I mean, the craziest B power plant you could ever want. So but, much development. But it took those. time. And it took people doing single cams and dual cams and ZCs and LSs. Man, it we took, didn't even, It took 20 years. We didn't even talk about LSs and then LS VTEX. Right. And then B20 VTEX. Someone was like, if you could do it with an LS and put a VTEC head, what about that CRV that's two liters? Yeah. Right? These are all of the people. Somebody thought of it. Somebody did it. And it led up to the point where LSV Tech, the first person who didn't know about the dowel pins and plumbing it, blew their shit up. Yeah. And then someone figured it out. And then, like, I remember the first time someone said, hey, did you know that Golden Eagle makes an LSV Tech kit now? Yeah. So all you need is an LS motor, which were still, like, 400 bucks at a junkyard, a V Tech head, which was, if you're getting an ITR head, it would have been about 1200 bucks. Yeah. With and the then, cams. And then an oil line kit. An oil line yeah, kit. Which somebody is, had to figure out that the yeah. head wasn't getting oil, uh, right. proper oiling. And when you put it all together, I mean, people were ripping. And then somebody was like, yo, what if I turbo that, right? So these are all steps and all people who led the way to the point where the B is just this, like, amazing thing. And then someone's just like, dude, look at the new RSX, right? The Integra in Japan, but they're going to call it an RSX. And it has this, like, reverse rotation, weird, I don't know about this fucking motor. I remember everyone was like, I don't know, man. What are they doing? And now it would be as if Honda... Uh, it would be kind of as if Honda knew what they were doing. Yeah. Because we all thought as enthusiasts, no, what are you doing? Yeah, the B is so good. The B is so good. And so when we come back, we're going to jump into the K and how we've gone from single and over and dual overhead cam Ds and ZCs and, and, and Bs to the K, man. The K that's... that's uh, It changed. It changed, it changed everything. everything. It changed everything. So when we come back, we'll talk about that, okay? We'll see you guys in a moment. Think Bigger Podcast. This is a branch of the Think Bigger Project that is a, a brand and a movement and an ideology that was created to a better the community and the culture around it. How you behave in your relationships, how you build a car, how you do anything comes from the way that you think. And if you can start there, then everything else will follow. All right, you guys, welcome back. So the first segment, we were talking about the past, all the previous power plants that people used, some of the stories of our, our own experiences, but all of that led up to the present. And that would be really the first thing that people are going to think about is the K-series. 
You have a lot of experience with kegs. I do. Okay. I've actually never owned a, a vehicle where I opted to put a keg. Yeah. Right. My my my, uh, my build, the first version, F twenty. Mm -hmm. Second version, I actually loved it so much. The whole HF thing, I just kept it. Yeah. And when I went to the third, I think everyone sort of just kind of thought. And and you know what? Oh, maybe that it would be a keg. Yeah. And, and honestly, you guys, it, it was a personal choice because when I envisioned that car. Even in the third version, I didn't envision a K in it. Now, there's a couple of guys who have done, and they're really low-key mm -hmm. guys, but there's some very nicely done K-swap uh, preludes. Yeah. They're just, wait. one guy's waiting, I think he's almost done. When it comes out, I think it's going to really be like, I think people are really going to like it. I won't say his name yet, maybe he doesn't want it to be out there, but it's actually really nice. Nice. Like, very nice. Okay. So anyways, your CRX, we were talking about mm -hmm. CRXs in the first segment. Yeah. Your CRX, you ended up going K. Right. Right. So why? So this, my C, I had multiple CRXs, right? Yes. Well, let's just say like natural progression, uh, B sixteen OBDO. Yeah. GSR OBD one. Yes. That was like kind of ITR, you know. Parts. Yes. Um, and then K twenty A JDM. Yes. So that was just kind of my natural progression. Yeah. Uh, it's like anything for me. Uh, I'm always trying to challenge myself to the, the next best thing. Sure. Because I don't have somebody that's going to literally teach me how to do what I'm doing. Sure. Um, so I kind of have to like learn on my own, yeah. right? And and my thing is like I didn't go to school for automotive. I went to school for like marketing, right? Which I don't feel like I really probably should have. I think you know maybe. I'm gonna be honest with you, man. Huh? You're not really that good at marketing. I'm really not. I mean, you're I like, like a nice person, but I'm you're like not the an, I'm like the anti-marketing. This is true. I learned all about marketing, <laughs> and I like to do the opposite. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, um, so yeah, you know, I never, I, I, and I feel like the money it takes to, let's say, put together an engine, a GSR, a K-series, okay. whatever, right? Like, let's say that, like, if you're one of the, I was one of the first people to put together a streetable k CRX. Okay. Brian G had done it because he did a mount kit. Then it was like Pac Man. And then I was like right there, like one of the first K E F cars. Like one of the first ten for sure. Okay. So I didn't really have anything to go off of. I wasn't like hitting up Brian G every minute and asking him questions. I was just like, I'm just gonna do it. I'm gonna use this money that it costs me as if it was like investing in school. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Because obviously everything that you do for the first time is gonna be way more money. Yes. Right? The Hell first yeah. the first figuring out the cooling system, figuring out the brakes, figuring out all these things, the fitment problems in the yes. CRX. Yes. It's just gonna tax you, right? Yeah. And I know it, but to be able to be the first ish ones to do these certain things and, and really develop it to my own. And I know that I'll be able to make products off of it. Okay. Um I just forced myself to, to to figure it out to figure it out and fork out the money and just do it what so, mounts did you use i use house sport okay so brian had already officially put he out had, mounts literally when he officially put out the mounts i bought it okay right and he, you know he maybe his first run of like 20 pieces okay it went to certain people but i was actually like got them boom in the car yeah swap getting done like i was like one of the i was getting the ball rolling quick okay um yeah so i got the case swap done and um, it was a great engine. And I, there was a lot of hurdles, a lot of things that I didn't do really right the first time. Okay. Meaning, you know, maybe I, I kind of put my I put my, my money, I got to add somebody to help me do something. Yes. Like the cooling was kind of a disaster with the radiator. You mean like finding the right fitment? It's, yeah, like we tried to use an EG radiator turned sideways. Okay. And that was terrible idea. Terrible idea. Yeah. Because it's a single pass. Well, it's not even just a single pass. It's just that, it's just that the fitment was still not right in yeah. the CRX at all, and it was just like almost hitting the intake manifold. And I remember just, and I'm really like the details are everything, right? And it was just not. It was it was kind of a disaster. So what did you end up using after the sideways? After city? the sideways radiator, um, I went on Griffin's website, ah. and that's when we did the first tucked one. Okay. So I literally went, okay, here's my dimensions, here's my radiator, uh, this, this, and this. And the first one was not a dual pass. It was a single pass. Um, and it flowed down. 
but the problem was that it was so long okay you could only fit really short fans it was weird because my tanks the tanks were on the top of the bottom sure and they were very tall yeah so even my second revision the second version of a cooling system on that crx was still not not perfect i see you know what so that brought us to i mean we could do a whole episode on radiators yeah and so when he was talking about right now how it brought him to to contacting griffin there have been people racing cars for a long time and there have been companies who have specialized in making parts for people racing cars for a long time Griffin was one of more than a few that if you had the money and the wherewithal, you could reach out to them, fill out measurements. Yeah, just there's a template on and, their website. They would send you like um, templates. And yes. Then you could print them out and you could like draw your radiator. Draw your radiator. Now, for a lot of us, 20 years ago, 15, 17 years ago, that's like not that big of a, of a, of a thing sounding now, but it was a big thing then. Right, because you know half the people don't really actually know. You just know don't open your radiator cap when it's hot, and you fill it up there, and that's about the extent, right? But knowing a single pass, dual pass, people figured out inlet and outlet. But I mean, a custom radiator, and then the money would be like you know six, seven, eight, nine hundred bucks, right? And that's a lot of money at any time, but especially back then. For like one part, it's just a radiator that you would. If you had an EG, you would just use it. You could use a plastic EG radiator on a K swap if you wanted. Yeah, and it worked but, fine. Yeah, but just because I had the K and the CRX, yes, I couldn't fit a, a normal radiator. So it was always trying to, and that's why the whole tuck thing kind of came about. Mm. Because I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I just the intake manifold was literally right there by the hood latch. Yes. So so I you know I I literally am, and I'm not running AC, so. Wherever my AC condenser was, is that's where I was going to be able to fit yeah. a radiator. Yeah. So then it turned into like a tucked radiator. Not like, I wasn't trying to hide it per se the first time around. I was trying to like fit it under the manifold within this given space. Yeah. And I'm like, just try to make it just work and get the car to run. Yeah. And it ended up turning into, well, this can fit underneath the core support. Right. And when it's underneath the core support, when you look down, it gave a visual. It's visually, it, it made a visual impact on the engine bay. And so I remember you were just like, all right, well, it's this dimension. This is where we'll mount it. This is where the filler cap will be. And then at, it was about the same time that uh, I was doing the Prelude. And it was the same thing. There was no custom radiator for the Prelude, there was like a, a Koyo. Right, so it's bill it, right? Yeah. But I wanted something custom, and I needed to fit certain things, and I wanted it to look a certain way. And so I'm working with Ryan, filling out these templates, and by the time we got it, and and added a filler neck and an overflow tank, because and, and then they added a nice little rando spot okay. for you. <laughs> so uh, there was a um, a pet cock, right? Which to this day I do not understand who the fuck decided to name that drain a pet cock, right? Why? Why? But anyways, it's a whole different conversation. So there's a template, right? Dual pass, this high, this wide. This is where, you know, the halfway point will be. So the flow is like this and all this. And then we, we get this six, six, seven hundred bucks, right? Six, seven hundred bucks, like 15, 17 years ago. You get this thing. And then there's just a drain welded in. Like they had to weld it in. And I was like, why is this here right yeah it's not in the drawing yeah so we what ended up happening is remember my boy ronnie yeah right so shout out to my boy ronnie um you guys can follow him he on ig up, like further customizing. yeah uh follow him on ig it's out for war right out the word o-u-t the number four and war you can see this build he's doing right now this um crazy 510 build hmm. <sighs> wild right wild 510 build but anyways ronnie's a fabricator ronnie was my guy and i said ronnie I've got this radiator, but I want to make, I'm thinking about all of this underneath the core support of the Prelude. What if we integrate the overflow tank, so it's not a plastic one, it's not a metal one, integrate it, but put the fill cap right here so that when you look in my engine bay, you see nothing. Like if you look straight down, you just look past the core support and you see nothing. And so that ended up costing a lot of money to make happen, right? But the filler went through the core support 
and I uh, had, uh, you know, we made it so that the cap was on top of the core support. But when you push down to turn it, it was able to go down just enough where it didn't scrape the core support so I could feel right there. And it was like a really fucking cool radiator setup. Yeah. People have no idea how much that costs because, you know, Rywire has it and a ton of other people also have it now too. But buying a, a uh, custom, well, it looks custom, but it's really a, a customized universal unit. Yeah. That mounts in your Integra and your Civic. If people only realized the the pain and money that the <sighs> people doing it first had to go through, yeah, for them to just be here's a tucked radiator on a silver platter, yeah, and you they're accessible I mean? now in a bunch of places. And um, I mean, I remember you you being the first person that I ever saw do it, and then um, I mean, Prelude's such a rare thing, so that's not really saying the same thing, but. You know, that, that cooling setup on, on version 2, when it was mint green, that cooling setup was astronomically expensive, but the outcome was amazing. Mm -hmm. And, um, and you know, we get to this point now where somebody wants to do something first, someone wants to try something first, someone sees someone else try something but wants to try to improve on it. And then you get to this, and that's how it gets to the K now being this, I mean, from billet valve covers, drag cartel, right? to um, any kind of header you can imagine, right? The RBC or the RRC, but people are porting them, they're modifying them. Like, do you remember when our crew was like the only, oh, yeah. only available uh, like header? Because he, oh, yeah. he was like the first guy to do it in NorCal. If we're talking like NorCal and SoCal, I mean, got Charles. Wasn't Dan the, the person who did a lot of things first? Yeah, Dan's actually like... Dan at our crew has been around a, a long here. time. Oh, yeah. He's done a lot of things first. It's pretty cool. Like, he, you know, he was, dude, I, that was the first K-swapped EG that I've ever seen was, was Dan's Dan? car. Mm -hmm. Or no, sorry. I'm sorry. It wasn't Dan's car. Dan did the a, swap. A customer. Uh, for this guy named Ron. And it was a red EG, beautiful red EG. Yeah. Like, you couldn't even tell it was K-swapped. It was just, just like a, just yeah. clean, normal EG. Uh, there was like a little meet that we went to in San Jose. I ran into him. And it was just crazy to see how clean and meticulous this car was done. Uh, that car gave me a lot of inspiration for my builds because I ran into them a few times and every time I'd be like, pop the hood, I want to see it. And then I would notice new things every single time. So that was huge for me. And people to this day, they always tell me, like, especially like on that car, the S2000, they're like, I see it and I see it again. And yes. I, I want to keep looking because every time I look at it, I notice something new, yes. something more. That is a, actually a really, really cool compliment to get on a build. People yeah. do that for the, for my car as yeah. well. And that's a very humbling thing. Yeah, if they if they can continue to to look at it three, four, or five times yeah. and go, oh man, I didn't notice this, the whatever. So time. Dan from our crew, that EG K-Swap that he did is the first time that something did that to you. Yeah. Every time you kept looking at so it, that was there was something new. inspiration for me, yeah. Super dope. You know, you guys, honestly, man, look at where we are now, right? When you think K, right, you can do any kind of shifter you want now, right? Um, any type of camshaft. Um, it's just wild, you know? It's wild because yeah. that setup is going to be a with us for a really long time like and, sorry go ahead. no go ahead i was gonna say that like i was just thinking about the shifter options like oh yeah shifter. it went from you know you have an rsx shifter you mount it on top of the tunnel yes then it went to somebody figured out carceps i believe it carceps, was yeah, the adapter like, plate. yeah he's like he's like oh dude we're gonna try to make it on the bottom yeah the cr okay the crx carceps tunnel thing okay i went to the junkyard okay and I brought a fucking Sawzall yes. with a battery, and I cut out a fucking CRX tunnel. Tunnel. Sent it to Carceps. So they could make it? So they could make one for me. So are you the reason why they made the first one? Yeah. <laughs> like, I, and I only thought about that right now, because this kind of stuff, like, I... But I yeah. mean, what year was that? Um, oh, three, oh, four. We're getting old, right? Oh, three, oh, four. I don't know. Fifteen... Somewhere. 15 yeah. years ago, 16 years ago, we're going to forget. Yeah. So, so I mean, car I, steps made it because you sawzalled. I sawzalled a piece of the car. Yes, from and the sent it to them so they could create sent it. Sent it to them and was like, yo, like, I don't, I'm, I'm pretty sure I paid for it still. Sure. I was just like grateful to have something that yeah. I don't have to cut my so car up yeah, yeah. as much. 
they give you a little template. You have to cut a certain amount. Yeah. Some of it will pop through. You gotta get clever with it. You seal it all up. There's yeah. multiple pieces. And then the cables, you know, you have to figure out a creative way to route them because they're a little bit long on the CRX. Yeah. I mean, dude, like that's just one 20th of how yeah. difficult the swaps were back then. Back then, yeah. I mean, you know, look, the, the first thing you need to get something in a, in a chassis is the mounts. So you have people who've been creating mounts. You know, he keeps referencing Brian G. For those of you that might not catch that reference, that's Brian Gillespie. That's Hasport. And then that guy has been around. You want to talk about another person who's made a lot happen for our scene and our culture is Brian from Hasport. Okay? So, you know, what he's talking about, the K, right? I mean, somebody, okay, just like with LS Vtex and B20 Vtex, somebody was like, well, wait a minute. That's a K20, K20R. Right, that's the shit, right? But what about the TSX or the Accord, right? What about a K24? Just like someone with the two liters with the with the CRV, someone was like, "That's two point four. If you put a VTEC head on that, and those things make crazy power." Yeah, like the K24s in like normal form. Let's talk about like the older ones. Yeah, they their VTC wasn't as good. They didn't have as much advance and stuff like that. So yeah, it was just the same kind of thing. Even though the K24 heads are pretty good. The K20R heads are that much better. Yes. The cams are better, et cetera, et cetera. And there's bigger like VTC window. So then you could throw that V18, I'm sorry, K20R head yes. onto a K24 like Element Accord yes. block. Yes. And this is, you know, I'm, I'm talking like 0.2 to 0.4 engines here. Yes. Um, it was a great combination. Oh, yeah, man. The first time I sat in one, I was like, oh, I felt like we were flying. Yeah. Like this feels so entirely fast. different. Yeah. Uh, the first time I drove an RSX that had a, a US RSX that had a K20R swap, and I was like, oh, you didn't even do K24, as if, you know, the guy had spent like 10 racks to yeah. make this happen. But he's like, go ahead and drive it. And he was on, uh, not E85, it was like a 100 octane, which you didn't even need 100 octane, right? But I drove it, and first of all, the sixth gear blew my fucking mind. Because if you have spent all your years driving five gears, look at where six is, right? It's like, what? And I remember driving it, and I thought the car was stupid quick. Yeah. And and then you get the people who start coming up with these, you know, custom parts, and then the JDM cool parts, and then header options, and uh, intake manifold options. Now billet anything, billet everything, and you that's that's the present, and even the future to to a long degree of the honda culture and i mean the k series is such a good power plant like we were talking about in the first segment other manufacturers that are using it you have the ariel atom using k's yeah. and then supercharged k's which make them ridiculously mm -hmm. scary fun to and drive. then you have the whole fleet of random random cars that use k swaps they use k swaps all the nissans are getting them now yes all the bmws are getting them now you know we're talking 90s right yes um all the bmws all the nissans all the um what else is super popular do i know a couple of volkswagens that have given it a shot yeah s2000 s2000s S2000s are putting k's in them um nsx's are going k yeah yeah i mean you you take an nsx right for the purest you know senna honda they got it right why would you do anything other than maybe a different tire arrow right but ripping out the c power plant to put a k but look at i mean it's an extreme example but look at rs future amir right his nsx with a k turbocharged k is killing right mm -hmm. you know i had him, i just had him on the podcast on the think bigger podcast you guys check out that episode you get to hear a lot of sto uh, uh, his story but that's an example of a k but like he's talked about there's a, you're some euro cars older Japanese cars of different manufacturers that are using it. Some people doing it just for fun, but that's that's where we are right now. You can make three, 400 horsepower all motor. Yeah. People are making four plus digits turbocharge and uh, you know billet options. And I think in just a few more years, you'll probably be able to have just a, an outright bulletproof block. Yeah, and you know? then you'll have like these all wheel drive components that will be you now know, the all-wheel drive cars. Um, the cars are, they're getting amazing. Yes. Like, they're getting to just be, like, amazing. Yeah, like the 92 the to 95 are. Civics, the 9401 Integras that are driving around all-wheel drive now with a with a built K. 
with a billet K. <laughs> yeah. With a billet or and or billet K, and those things are just destroying anything. You yeah. know, twenty one hundred pounds. You know, and you just get to hook on all four. And you're you're at like you know in some cases thousand plus horsepower. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you know, it, it's an it's a fantastic thing to see the past lead up to the present. And then the future. So there's some a few things coming up for the future. The K is also the future. But there's some other things going on and some random swaps that when we come back, we're gonna talk about those. Sounds see you guys. Good. Yeah, see you guys in a minute. Hey, what's going on everybody? Ryan from Rywire here, and today I have something really, really cool to show you. What I wanna show you guys is that nothing that I'm doing here is so far-fetched that you guys can't do it at home. We don't have any CNC, there's no five axis machine here. I'm literally just using my brain and hand tools to get a really, really cool project done. Even in the most basic conditions, a beautiful outcome can arise. All right guys, so we're back and we're talking about the oddball engines that Honda designed. And they're still good, I think. There's some really some good engines still to talk about, but they're just not as popular. They're not as popular, but you know what? I'm going to be honest. I haven't looked into them very much. And the one that comes to mind as far as oddball, mm -hmm. oddball, uh, that, that really represents the potential future is that L15. Right. Brian Gillespie from Hasport has spent a lot of time making mounts, and I think they're now completely available because he believes in the L15. And truthfully, I don't know, he might really be onto something because yeah. they're affordable, turbocharged, and they fit. Right. So it's like, uh, on that on that note, I think he's dead on. But honestly, how many of you guys care or would want an L15? Um, is it because you've never looked into it like I hadn't re until re very recently? Or is it because you just envision a K? Uh, in your power plant. But what do you think? Um, I don't know. You don't know how, how to so, feel about it? I mean, here's here's the thing. I haven't looked into it enough either okay. to like really know. But let's just think about, let's just think about as an option, like not as a substitute for a K. Okay. But let's just say a substitute for like um, a bit more of a basic swap. Okay, like, like a B. Like no. How about, yeah, like how about a B, non-VTEC B? So let let our a B twenty. Let's call okay. it. Let's call it a substitute for a B twenty, because uh, B series VTEC is like a whole another thing, okay. right? There's plenty of power to be made. There's so much parts developed. Like you, you're okay. Steve at H Motors. Okay. He calls the B twenty the what is it the the people's engine or something like that. Okay. You know what I'm talking about? No, I do not. He, he, he on Instagram I see it a lot, and he's mentioned it before. Like oh, it's the people's engine. Because everybody just buys those, because they'll they'll go in just like a B, obviously. Yeah. Uh, they're super inexpensive, throw them into everything. Reliable. Reliable, plenty of power, and then there's future upgrades that you could do. And obviously, you could eventually put your VTEC head, and you have a B20 VTEC. Okay, but I think that the L the L turbo or any of these L engines would be a good substitute for that engine. Because the price is probably going to be even a bit lower, potentially, than a B20. Okay. Okay. You're going to pretty much need mounts no matter what. Okay. And a lot of people need engine loom, wire harness, no matter what, and some kind of an ECU solution. They're totally running out of P28s. Like I said, the prices are going through the roof. So let's say that you can figure out a way, because I don't know if it's fully there yet, to be able to run a hacked version of that factory computer okay okay something low cost so when you get your engine swap maybe you get a harness maybe you don't but maybe you get uh, an ECU with it and you could swap it in with a you know a low cost house sport mount kit goes in you can run the factory computer maybe with like a little like flash tune or something like that you're still into it not that much because those I don't think those engines are more than a few hundred dollars right now right so Horsepower wise, you're you're higher than a B20, and you're probably into it not much more in cost. And I think that this is his justification of it. Um, I don't know. I they're pretty reliable from what I understand. You know, I actually did have one in a fit that I had for a year. Okay. But um, 
they're coil on plug. Yep. So, you know, you're away from that, that nasty distributor. Yes. And I'm not just saying visually. Functionally. It, they're Technologically. Hard, they're, they stopped making quality parts for those distributors. You can't really get a Honda genuine coil igniter, etc. anymore. You're getting these like Chinese made ones that are, they're so hit or miss. Yeah, man, I, re I remember people's options back in the day was distributor king. Oh, right. Uh, they were like a hundred bucks. Yeah. And sometimes they would work amazing for like a year. Yeah, but there was, those were Chinese distributors Yeah, and well. sometimes it's like three months later, you're like, fuck, man. We, we couldn't even, like, I used to sell distributors 10 years ago on my website. I used to sell multiple a day because that's how important they were. But, dude, I'm not going to lie. We fought so many battles with those oh the distributor that i was getting them from was like we're getting the igniters and the and the coils from the same exact manufacturer that honda uses and i'm just like there's no fucking way mm. why are all these bad you mm. know a certain amount were bad so i'm sure that there's people out there that are like damn i bought one of those from rye wire before and maybe it worked good for a while and then it took a shit it's like you could there was no way around it you couldn't get good ones yeah so we had we fought so many battles with that stop selling those but what i'm getting at is now you don't have to worry about that because this l series is already coil on plug it's already coil you on already plug. have the fat the proper ignition system yeah it's got triggers in it that's not you know inside the distributor so that's huge um they're super affordable yeah super affordable they're they fit just pretty fine. small yeah. yeah small some um, of them are turbocharged and you know yeah. whatever yeah so there's plenty of potential you could just go like it's probably like uh, a company has a factory replacement turbo, turbo. that may add 40, 50 horsepower. Yeah. I mean, you're making mid twos pretty easily, Yeah, pretty affordably. I mean, honestly, guys, would you do it? Uh, just let us know. I think if it was just like a street car, I'll go with it. Yeah. You know, like something that I'm, I'm just driving like to work and just want to have fun and be in a 90s car or, or, or not I well i think i think that affordability right because at one point b series were uh i mean it's relative of course but affordable and then they started to become not affordable and they're becoming rarer and so i think the idea of that there being a whole hell of a lot of those um and them being affordable right now is really it's true um but i mean other than a k of all the different types of K's, because nobody wants the one that came in the US EP, mm -hmm. that K20, no one wants that. But I mean, even still, like, I mean, you could- I mean, those, aren't, could, those aren't bad. Yeah, you could dude. build it. Yeah. You know? But other than K's, do you think the L is the other option, or do you see any other Honda power plant being the swap of the future? Well, we haven't talked about J's, but J's are very big still. Mm -hmm. They're cumbersome because they're V engines. Yeah. Um, not very probably realistic for for the smaller 90s cars sure but maybe more realistic for if you're building like if i was building i think i don't know for sure but if i was building a little off-road buggy okay or something that was dedicated to like off-road use you would like, do a j I, I, i'm not saying i would do a j but i would definitely think about a j i've seen some pretty cool dune buggies there's a lot powered by j down the road apparently there's a, a a uh, little off-road place and that's all they do is just j swap into their sand, sand cars yeah see that's really cool i mean the j there's also becoming more, more options too. yeah um, um i know that now i think some people don't like the transmission um there are adapters to other transmissions i think inline pro and a couple other places so now you start to open that up i mean it is big it's definitely different and that is the only time that if any one of you just just for the sake i had to do this ryan if you have a j you can say headers you can say headers um if you have a b one. or a k you can't say headers you did not buy headers for your swap you only have one cylinder head so you can only buy one header there's only one there's not two it's just header you bought a header if you have a j it's headers, because there's two heads. That's it. Just had to get that one off my chest because to this day. Oh yeah. To this day. All day. So, anyways, you guys, what do you think? Do you know anything about the L? Have you cared about it? Have you looked into it? Have you guys seen Hasport's uh, IG or their website talking about it? And if you haven't, now that we've talked about it, what do you think? Would you do one, or would you do a J, 
Whereas the J2 big and it's too heavy and it's all okay. Like, what do you guys think the future of not just the Honda swap scene, but um, being used for other power, uh, those power plants being used in other chassis? What do you guys think? I mean, what do you think, Ryan? You think the K is still going to reign supreme? Yeah. It's just too much stuff for it now. Yeah. Makes good power. And it's too easy to, like, I mean, all these companies have supported all these little products. And I almost feel like people enjoy buying all those little trinkets. That's a good point. And putting it all together. That's like, a good point. Um, back when I was doing a K, I, could, I didn't have the luxury, like I said, cooling was a huge hurdle. But, like, just these little bolt-on swivel necks and things to it. Like, sure. Uh, I could go backwards or this way or, like... Dude, it's so, like, modular intake manifolds now. Yes, yes, like, yes. If you have flipped the plenums around. Yes. Like, I would have loved to have yeah. some solutions like that. Center feed, yeah. flip it left or right. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's true. I mean, um, from filler necks, um, AC, power steering, yeah. um, applicable kits. kits. I mean, anything you could need. And, you, and the thing that's cool is you save up, you get a K, and then you can buy what you need piece by piece yeah right you don't have to buy it all at one time maybe you decide to switch something up you had power steering now you want to take it off uh ac or whatever so i think it's really cool that there's that much support because now there's just as much or, or more support for k's than there are for b's dude to get rid of the like idler pulley thing i literally i bought this aem larger underdrive pulley okay and then I put the alternator in a spot where it's not even supposed to live. Okay. And then you bolt it in and then you put washers and then you basically have to jam washers underneath the alternator. To space it? To space it, to tension the belt. So very janky. Yeah. And then I remember um, on my first K, I had to upgrade the hardware because the I had three bolts holding the alternator and tensioning it, but it was a little bit angled and the upper bolt actually snapped. Yes. So then I had to take off the water pump and I had to re-drill out that bolt and I had to upgrade to like, you know, 8.8 .8 grade bolts yeah. or something like that and jam washers and all these, makes all these shims. Like that's how we had to do it. Yeah. There wasn't yeah. no like, um, Carcep's freaking alternator bracket yeah. that you just bolt on and twist and it just builds tension. Yeah, you know, honestly now with companies like Drag Cartel and uh, Hybrid and K-Tune, anything. Yeah, they got it all. They have it all. And you can make a, both a reliable and powerful and aesthetically pleasing setup. The problem is, uh, for some people, is that they all look the same now. RBC, this manifold, that manifold, this header. Yeah, all the swaps look the same. They're starting to look the same. And there are people who use color combinations, valve cover colors, titanium, intake arms, boxes. So there's always people who are, are switching it up. But what do you guys think? Do you think that they all look the same now? Or do you think that there are people... If you think there's somebody who swapped, stands out, right? Put them in the comments. We'll go check them out. May, uh, we might already know about them. We might not. But if there's somebody, if you're doing one, if you're a friend or just somebody you know online, share it with us below in the comments and let us know because we would like to know. We'd like to see the stuff that people are coming up with. I'm doing a case swap right now. Uh... You are doing a K-Swap right now. Just thought of that. Um, which we will talk about in another episode. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you know what, you guys, as always, we appreciate you joining us. This is all about our community, our culture, and these subjects and topics are about and from you guys. So comment and let us know what you want us to talk about in, in a future episode of Car Talk. Don't hesitate to uh, uh, hit smash the bell. Smash it. Smash it. And... Uh, and and, and and tell your friends. Just tell, just do the uh, Ron Popeil. Just tell one person, only one person, that how much you love this episode. Okay. Uh, it's if, probably too too old for most of you. If any of you know who the fuck Ron, Ron Popeil. Popeil is, I own the Ronco Electric Food Dehydrator. Okay. If any of you have any, Proud the first me. person who comments below and can can talk about who Ron Popeil is. Don't Google it. Just be honest with us and yourself. If you know and know about the fucking food dehydrator, if you know anything about that, the first person to comment below, we're going to send you some shit because that means you're old or you're young and you had some people around you that forced you to or watch you're just infomercials. Well -versed. You're just well-versed. Or you're just well-versed. I used to watch infomercials under my own damn wanting to. It, I dude, just 
Look, I, I, I woke up in the morning as a little kid. Instead of watching cartoons, you watch infomercials. I watch infomercials. That might explain why you're a little bit different than the average person. Yeah. But look, hold on. I'm not making fun of you because I know about Ron Peel. Yeah. And I know about Set It and Forget It. Set It and Forget okay. It. Man. So if any of you have any idea of what we're talking about, to all the OGs and the older heads, I think you're just going to know. But if you're younger and you have any idea... Let us know. First person to comment below talking about you know about what set in and forget it means and what all that is. <laughs> Let us know. We're going to send you some. Uh, we'll send you a prize pack, okay? Appreciate you guys, Ryan. We're out. We're out of here, guys. Thank you.